Honestly, a bunch of people probably will die in the beginning. It's yeah. it's tough sledding over there. You know? And I think if you, once we have the uh, floating space platforms, we, we can set the put the um, position them such that the ship can come back in a single orbit. Amazing. Um, so then it could be like th you know let's say if we can get three ship launches per day, that's a thousand flights a year, each with uh, 100 to 150 tons of. Now we're now orbit. we're talking a real space program. If if you warmed Mars up, you'd have an ocean with an average depth, depth, I think, of almost a mile or something like that wow. on the northern part of the, of the planet. We have a, a serious issue with population collapse. Hmm. Um, that's far bigger than people realize. Hey, I'm Steven, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, Elon Musk has an urgent warning to literally every person on Earth, share some new details about plans for a moon base, Mars, Starship, plans for propellant production on Mars, and SpaceX's absolutely insane plan to catch the booster of Starship with the launch tower. I mean, <laughs> let's get into it. And by the way, since I know there's a lot of crypto lovers watching and people who like free stuff, it's your lucky day. For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in free crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. It also helps out the channel. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. Like, I'm optimistic about the future, but you, but you can also say, like, okay, well, so how long do you think civilization will last before there's a catastrophic event? If you say infinity, you're, this is not correct. Yes. Okay. This is, this is not, uh, history does not suggest that. <laughs> <laughs> history just suggests we do dumb things to uh, civilizations all the time. And, and, you know, this is the ancient Egyptians, the Romans, ancient Romans, where are they now? <laughs> Let's do the video series. Where, where are they now? Yes. The, the Babylonians, peak. Sumerians, yeah. the... Yeah, you name it, you know, so, but we do have a long-term plan for sustainability of, um, of even rocket flights uh, by uh, generating uh, propellant uh, using um, sustainable energy, wind and solar, mm -hmm. uh, to generate, starting first with uh, liquid oxygen. Um, and for our Starship vehicle, uh, it's uh, almost 80% liquid oxygen yeah. uh, and 20% um, uh, uh, liquid methane. Um, and um, the oxygen, it's obviously pretty easy to create that. Uh, you just use um, wind and solar electricity and, um, and you do air, air separator because you've got the oxygen already in the air. The plants are making the oxygen. Um, so you can, use just, you can just use electricity, basically, renewable electricity to create 80% of the propellant on the rocket. And then for the remaining 20%, uh, you can use the Sabatier process where you, take, you actually take CO2 out of the atmosphere and you combine that with water to create CH4 and, and more O2. Yep. Um, and, that's, and that's in fact what we would do on Mars sure. to generate propellant. Sure. So, so, so there is a long-term plan for sustainable generation of propellant uh, for the rockets. I do want to emphasize that. This is super awesome and also super necessary. In order to have a self-sustaining colony on Mars, we must be able to generate propellant on the red planet. It's great that there's a plan there. It's also great that this is such a simple thing. And finally, the icing on the cake, it can be done sustainably over the long term as well. It is gonna be a momentous day when the first propellant plant is up and running on Mars. And, and listen, I, I think it's a moral imperative for the human race to be able to move off Earth while we have the opportunity. Everything we yeah. know is uh, well, right yeah, here. I, and just because like, it's like, um, it's, it's not, it's <laughs> just one of the other, because it sometimes feels like, oh, is this some escape hatch for rich people? Um, <laughs> No, no, you know, they think it's like, so, you know, going to Mars reads like that ad book for, for Shackleton going to the Antarctic. You know, it's, it's dangerous, uh, it's uncomfortable, um, it's a long journey, you might not, you know, come back alive, um, but it's a glorious adventure and uh, it'll be amazing, an, an amazing experience. And your name will go in history. Yes, <laughs> you might die. <laughs> and it's going to be uncomfortable and uh, you probably won't have good food and uh, all these things, you know. <laughs> So, so yeah. if, 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 if an arduous and dangerous journey where you may not come back alive, um, but it's a glorious adventure, sounds appealing, and Mars you is still, the place. And you that's still the have that's the thousands of, of volunteers, if not millions of volunteers who would yeah. want to go. I, I mean, honestly, a bunch of people probably will die in the beginning. It's, yeah. it's tough sledding over there. You We're know? an exploring um, species. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not for everyone. We don't want to make anyone go. So it's, like, <laughs> it's volunteers only. Out of interest, let me know in the comments below if you would be one of the crazy people who would actually volunteer to be an early settler of the Mars colony to actually try and build up our base on Mars. Seriously, let me know in the comments below. Yes, no. What are your reasons for or against? Personally, no fucking way would I be one of the early settlers on Mars. But absolutely, over the long term, when things are a little bit more established, I would love to visit. One last question, update on Starship, because that's what, I mean, Starship's taking us to the moon, taking us to Mars. That's and the it's, it's the, it is audacious. Can you compare it, is, it to the it Apollo? It is audacious, yes. Compare it to the Apollo vehicle, uh, the Saturn V, for comparison for a second, for folks to know, get a sense of it. Sure, well, I think the thing that's least obvious from when it's um, on the ground, is, from, the, from the videos and pictures, is the size of it. So, it's, um, it's going to be the largest flying object ever. Hmm. So it'll be uh, twice the thrust and uh, weight of the Saturn V. Just wanted to take a moment here to recognize the colossal scale of this f***ing rocket, the largest flying object ever, and twice the thrust and weight of the Saturn V rocket, which took people to the moon. <laughs> I mean, this is a serious rocket. Amazing. So that's uh, just for a second, and taller. Um, so including the launch escape tower. So it's a very tall rocket. Um, 100, and, 100, 120 meters tall. And, and because uh, it's so wide, yeah. the, it, the proportions uh, right. are obscure that fact, how big it is. Yeah, you can see in some of the pictures that have been released when it's landing on the moon and the, the, the people look like ants. <laughs> it's, very, it's a big rocket. This, is, this, this rocket is uh, capable of um, you know, at least 100 tons and probably closer to 200 tons of useful payload to the surface of the moon. So and, and we're, it's, it, we're designed it to be far in excess of NASA's requirements, yeah. um, and so w it's really intended to be something that uh, you know that can enable a permanently occupied uh, base on the moon. Hmm. So you know we've got per obviously permanently occupied a base in in Antarctica, um, and it would be great to have one of, one on the moon as well. Yeah, um, and you can do you know I think a lot more research if you have the scientists actually there. Um, and we could have uh, some some very powerful telescopes. Um, no, it's, the moon. You know, there's some great sayings from uh, from Robert Heinlein that said, if you know, if God had wanted humanity to have space flight, they would have, you know, she would have given us a moon. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's like, a great it's staging just, place. Just, it's, exactly. It's sort of it's just 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 off the coast. Um, <laughs> um, Mars is is much 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 further. <laughs> yeah. Uh, SpaceX aren't messing around here. 100 to 200 useful tons of payload to the moon is an enormous amount of stuff. I mean, 100 useful tons. I mean, you could literally send 50 Tesla Model S's up there, a few battery packs, some solar panels as well, and literally be off to the races. You could have an entire fleet of Teslas as half a payload on one Starship trip to the moon. Just as an example of how much goddamn stuff 100 to 200 tons actually is. It's a lot. Probably not quite enough to fit your girlfriend on board. She might tip the scales a little bit over 200 tons, but outside of that, pretty much anything you want to bring, done. More important than the size of Starship is the fact that it is intended to be fully and yeah. rapidly reusable. Yeah. So this is the fundamental holy grail breakthrough needed for for uh, access to space. Uh, to, to make humanity a true space-bearing civilization, we must have a fully and rapidly reusable rocket. Mm. Um, now, we've made some progress in that direction with Falcon 9 where the booster is reusable and the uh, Dragon spacecraft uh, upper portion is reusable um, but the, 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 the second stage is not reusable um, and, the, and, and I would say right now uh, I would not say the Falcon booster spacecraft and, uh, and fairing, they're, they're not rapidly reusable like it takes a fair bit of effort uh, less effort than the much less effort than the space shuttle took yeah um, but uh, but it was a turnaround every year or so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We had yeah. four, uh, and it took like about a year, yeah. year to turn them around. Um, you know, we're, we're getting it down to um, a few months, basically, and soon, like probably under a month, uh, to turn around a booster. Whereas um, Starship is intended to be both fully and rapidly usable. So the the booster comes right back to the launch pad. Um, literally, is caught by the 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 launch tower. Yep. So it's, it lands and is actually caught by launch tower arms, as aspirationally. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's just certainly certain. That, that looks exciting, like science fiction. <laughs> exciting and guaranteed. Great. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the very first video I posted on this channel, Elon Musk's Psychedelic Secret, this might be a good time to check out that video to understand how in the f*** Elon or SpaceX came up with such an insane idea. Let me just explain, okay? For those of you that don't understand what Elon just said, they're going to send the Starship booster up. 
put stuff into orbit, right? Send payload, literally 100 plus tons to the moon, those kind of things, right? In this gigantic, the biggest thing that's ever flown, the biggest thing that's ever flown. And then the biggest thing that's ever flown is going to come flying back down with pinpoint accuracy to the very launch tower from which it left and be caught by the grid fins. If SpaceX can actually pull this off and catch the Starship booster with the launch tower, I mean, just imagine being a competing space company trying to develop your own reusable rockets. You may as well just give up at that time or just go work for SpaceX if you're good enough to get hired. And I'm not here to disparage other companies attempting to develop reusable rockets of their own. I'm just pointing out how embarrassingly far ahead SpaceX are. They've already nailed land-based. They've already nailed drone ship landings. And soon they're going to be attempting to catch the goddamn booster with the launch tower. Like, what even is this? Um, <laughs> so the booster gets, it, it comes back about six or seven minutes later. And it's, and it's caught, so it's, it's uh, right there. And then caught by launch tower arms and placed right back onto the launch stand. Amazing. And then the, the, the ship is, I actually want the ship also to be caught by the, um, the launch tower. Uh, now the ship will take, it takes at least 90 minutes to orbit the Earth. Yeah. Um, and um, we may take more than one, it may take uh, three or four orbits to get uh, the ground track realigned with the um, landing zone, yeah. The landing zone, depending on where you are. Yeah. Uh, but the point is that the ship will come back and be, uh, be, be right, land right by the tower and be placed right back on. And so... Uh, we like a 767, just refuel yeah. and go. It's, it's intended to be such that the booster can be used, I don't know, uh, a dozen times a day. And the, sh and the ship, wow. the ship could be, you know, like basically every couple of hours, and the that, that and that's mostly about uh, reloading propellant and um, hmm. and mounting the ship, uh, and then the ship could probably be used, um, you know, probably every in in theory every three hours if if you can make the ground track match, hmm. um, but certainly every say six to nine hours, or we'll call it twice a day for the ship, and we'll make more ships than there are boosters, so. And I think if once we have the uh, floating space platforms, we, we can set the, put the um, position them such that the ship can come back in a single orbit. Amazing. Um, so then it could be like, th you know, let's say if we can get three ship launches per day, that's a thousand flights a year. Of each with 100 to 150 tons of now we're, Now we're talking a real space program. This is a really insightful medium term goal from Elon there, revealing a goal to get to a thousand plus launches per year, each with a useful payload of 100 to 150 tons. I mean, the numbers there are kind of insane. That's over 100,000 useful tons of payload to orbit per year. I mean, that, that is a shit ton. In fact, that is hundreds of thousands of shit tons of stuff. And now for Elon's dire warning. By the way, when people say that we're, Earth is being overpopulated, mm -hmm. uh, it's not true. It, it's like look out the window, and I know you and I have had this conversation that you're more worried about underpopulation of planet. Oh yeah, Earth. yeah. Um, Earth is going to face a massive population collapse yeah. uh, in, in, a, in a, over the next 20, 20, 30 years. Massive. Yeah. Um, and it's this. This is definitely you know, well, civilization. You know, the question of like, is civilization going to die with a bang or a whimper? This would definitely be dying with a whimper. Yeah, we, um, we need... We need the birth rate is very low. Yeah, right? it's, it's been dropping, right? It used to be five, yeah. six children per family. Globally, it's like 2.4. Below In the U.S., it's below below replacement levels. Fourth, uh, I mean, in, in, in most of Europe, Russia, Japan, Korea, Singapore, yeah. um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's well below replacement. Um, but I would still say... Yeah, so. Are you? I mean, when we spoke last about this, era, you're still a sort of abundance optimist that the world is getting better on many levels. Yeah, I, I think the, the the world is generally getting better. Um, you know, I have some concerns about advanced AI, like the, um, you know, uh, that that that's a risk. Um, if I say like existential risks, I'd, I'd say um, super advanced AI is one. Mm -hmm. um, and and probably the second biggest risk after that is population collapse, not yeah. asteroid impact. No, if pop, the population collapse. The thing about uh, demographics and birth rates, you know what's going to happen in twenty years because you know the birth rate, yeah. rate last year. Yeah. It takes like twenty years for a person to grow up. Yeah. So we we know what the adult population is going to be twenty years from now because we know what kids were born last year. Um, I think it's we have a, a serious issue with population collapse. Mm. Um, that's far bigger than people realize. 
Man, Elon is not messing around here. We have a serious issue with population collapse far bigger than people realize. And obviously, Elon is doing his part to help and contribute once again, trying to help out the planet with Tesla, help out the species with SpaceX, and six children of his own as well. So clearly trying to do his part. Let me know in the comments below. Are you doing your part? Do you plan to? Or have you already had at least two children? Let me know in the comments below. And while we're on this urgent matter of population collapse, I just want to share anecdotally from my own experience since starting this YouTube channel, I've noticed a number of wonderful, kind, compassionate, good-hearted women attempting to help the cause and do their part, sliding into my DMs on Instagram and Twitter. I'd just like to say thank you so much for attempting to do your part, ladies. Always appreciated. And in all seriousness, this is a major and urgent concern. Elon's not crazy. He might sound a little bit nuts if you don't understand the nuance here. A lot of people overlook this. They think, well, hang on a minute. The global population keeps increasing. Oh my God, there's too many. But they're not thinking detailed enough. See, if you look at the overall picture, sure, the global population continues to increase over time. But if you get down into the weeds and look at the nuance here, it's actually a much more complicated picture. Generally speaking, as people are lifted out of poverty, they have far less children. So what we're seeing is parts of the world still living in poverty today with really, really, really high birth rates, that's making the overall global population continue to increase. But over time, as these people are lifted out of poverty, they're going to be having far less children and suddenly we face major population collapse. This is a real serious issue. I guess the best way to sum this one up to everybody watching, go and get fucked. Get it? Because <laughs> fuck. Cause <laughs> that was bad. I know. Anyway, moving on. And, you know, this the the social networks and everything, were, I mean, the, the social support networks were not really set up for a, a high ratio of retirees to workers. Somebody, so, so then... Well, or, thank I mean, God we, we got we, robots we, coming we, in. Yeah, yeah, the robots, exactly. We'll need those, we'll need those robots. But yeah. you, you don't want to have the, the youth effectively enslaved to take care of the elderly. Yeah. You know, which is what would kind of happen if, if you have an upside-down uh, demographic pyramid. Well, you heard the man. Go make some babies. So, interesting thing on Mars is um, that uh, Mars is a primarily CO2 atmosphere, uh, though it also has some... Uh, nitrogen and carbon and other trace elements. Um, and ni nitrogen and argon, I should say, in addition to pri primarily CO2. Um, so uh, in order to produce propellant on Mars, uh, we, would we would take the CO2 from the atmosphere, combine that with water ice. Um, Mars has a lot of ice uh, yeah. under the dust. It's amazing um, that we didn't, that 20 years ago, that wasn't known. I mean, we're discovering it every place now. Yeah, yeah, M Mars is just, is basically covered in ice. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just got dust too, so you know, it's hard to see the ice under the dust. But uh, there's, there's, I, I believe um, if, if you warmed Mars up, you'd have an ocean with an average depth, depth I think, of almost a mile or something like that wow. on the northern part of the, of the planet. It's like something like 40% of the planet would have an ocean potentially up to a mile, mile deep or something like that. Extraordinary. Um, like a, like a, no, a big. It wouldn't be like just a little lake or something like that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I get really excited thinking about the future of our species, not just on Earth, but beyond. And I'm so pumped to see the progress that SpaceX are making. The fact that Starship isn't just a piddly little rocket that maybe can send a tiny bit of payload, but we're talking serious amounts of payload, serious repetition, rapid reusability, a thousand flights per year. Mars is actually going to happen. And this matters. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like up to $250 in free crypto bonuses with BlockFi, use the link in the description. You can also get two free stocks with Weeble and a free stock with Stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.